Once there was a tiger who was drinking out of a stream, and he looked and he saw a little lamb, and he said to the lamb, You've been muddying my water, so I'm going to eat you. And the little lamb said, But sir, that's not possible because I'm downstream from you. And he said, Well, you insulted me last year. And the little lamb said, But sir, I'm only six months old, so I wasn't even around last year. And the tiger said, Well, if it wasn't you, then it was your father. And he pounced on the lamb right away. The story of the lamb and the tiger going after the lamb is an example of what's called confirmation bias. When you get an idea in your mind and you seek to confirm it, you're no different than that tiger who was going to find any excuse to do what he wanted to do. Confirmation bias traps us in our own egos. Our egos are not who we are, they're our sense of who we are. And our egos are very certain about what they believe. They try to convince us that we're right about anything we think or feel or believe. They try to convince us that our perspectives are definitive. And so what happens is, if we don't challenge our egos, if we don't challenge our own confirmation biases, then we're limited on the information that we ever know this isn't just some academic concept. And the challenge with using very simple tales to exemplify or to point, uh, to make a point is this. If I use a simple tale, then it's all too easy for our egos to tuck it away and say, okay, that makes sense. I get it. I understand it. I already know that. But the problem is this. In life, Wisdom is not about simply knowing something. In today's world, we have incredible access to nearly unlimited information. And so we can know things, and we might get information here, but that doesn't mean that we're actually living that wisdom here. Wisdom is living the knowledge that we have. So again, it's difficult at times to work with intelligent people. Because oftentimes, intelligent people are gathering so much information that when they hear something, like the tale of the tiger going after the lamb, they say, okay, that makes sense, I got it, I understand it. But then they gloss over it. It's not about glossing over this information, it's about living with it. So what can you do with this tale? What can you do with this information? How can this video immediately impact you in your life? Well, you can begin by doing this. Ask yourself that if you're alive, do you have more to learn? And wherever I go, where I speak all over the world, I ask people, do you believe you still have more to learn? Time and again, the hands go up. Everyone believes or says that they have more to learn. But if we all really believe, or more specifically you, if you believe you have more to learn in this life, then why get so defensive the moment someone disagrees with your perspective? Why seek to defend what you know rather than pursue learning more about something else? Or realizing that your perspective isn't definitive and there might just be information out there that if you really sat with it could alter how you see things, even things that mean a lot to you. So here's how you can use this information. Begin to challenge something that you feel absolutely certain about. If you feel certain about information and you say there's, there's no other perspective, there can be no other side, it is only what I believe, then challenge that. Even as an academic or intellectual exercise, try to take a different perspective. Play the devil's advocate. And what you're doing by engaging in an intellectual exercise like this is challenging your ego. And then here's what to do. Now, if you only set up a way of, here's the other side of what I believe, but you make it almost like a softball, so easy to dispute, well, then that's like playing chess with yourself. Of course, you're going to win the chess match, but you're also going to lose too. And so if you only set up a different side to what you believe, by offering yourself alternative perspectives that are silly, that hold no weight, 
then of course you're going to challenge those. That's what confirmation bias does. So if you say, look, here's what I feel strongly about. There can't be another side to this position. And then you, you offer up a half-heartedly offer up a different perspective and then you challenge that and you you obliterate that challenge then you're not really engaging in this exercise if you want to grow if you want to go deeper into the depths of your own psyche and go deeper toward your true self not stay locked in your ego then challenging your own ego is super important it doesn't mean that you can't challenge your ego and ultimately come to the position that you have. But if you choose not to question what you believe, your deeply held beliefs, if you choose not to question your in-group, the groups with which you identify, then you will remain locked in your ego. And you can easily convince yourself, just like that tiger convinced himself that the, that the little lamb was at fault. You can easily convince yourself of anything. But this isn't about proving yourself right. It's about teaching yourself on the deepest level that there is always more to learn. When we truly live that wisdom, then we lead with humility. And when we lead with humility, the way we engage, not only with others, but also with ourselves, becomes different. It becomes steeped in compassion. That's why I developed an entire approach to communication that is rooted in compassion and humility and conscious education in saying that when we speak to one another, we don't always have the answers. And if we can interact with each other from a truly humble perspective of saying, look, I don't have the information you have. And so teach me, teach me your perspective, teach me your side then the more we do that, the more we lead with genuine humility and genuine curiosity. In other words, we want to learn another perspective, another side, the more we can grow. And there is so much to learn in this universe and within. Remember this, you're the only person who has unrestricted, unfiltered access to your mind, and you are the only one who can truly challenge your ego and go into the depths of your psyche. I hope this helps. Do your best to live this wisdom. Until next time, as always, I wish you much peace.